What is <laughs> up, everyone? It's time for the nerds. Did you miss us? You know, I know you're sitting around just going, I have no life. There's nothing in my world except <laughs> bid nerds. You just anxiously sit around waiting for this show, just like we anxiously wait uh, to create the show for <laughs> you. Hello, everybody. My name yeah. is John Polnick. I gotta find the little button that says so. There it is, along with my partner Michael Deeb. How are you, buddy? How is how are things in the San Francisco? Oh, you know, boring. I sat around all week waiting to record the show, but it's not like you sat on your hands all weekend. How was Red Rock? Uh, Vegas Auto Fest at the Red Rock Woo! Country Club was off the hook. Uh, we had uh, at least three times more people there than we've ever had. Damn. Three times the cars. It was just a mad, mad, crazy show. Uh, wow. so thanks for all of those, all of you. I'm sure it was all because of the advertising uh, that they did on Bid Nerds uh, that brought all the people there. It was a great show. Great show. Oh, Sorry if you had to wait a long time in the bus line. Uh, we'll do better next year. Yeah. I saw Rami did a nice commercial, and then uh, who's that guy that does the uh, garage? He does the car show. Oh yeah, we got uh, yeah count the count from the count, Count's Customs. The yeah. count. He did a nice little spot. Those are some winning endorsements. Yeah, it's not all bid minute. nerds. It's not all yeah. bid nerds, you know. Yeah, I'm sure it was all us, but uh, maybe it was the count from Count's Customs. Who knows? We had a great yeah. turnout. Uh, the weather couldn't have been better. It was just fantastic. Well, it's nice when you don't have to, you know, fight. Um, you know the perception of a pandemic and you could just have people come out and have fun so yeah, I'm glad it went really really well uh, and by all accounts not only three times the number of people but you said you were filling up the driving range and the whole 18th fairway you had cars for days right like yeah you had, there was you we had, had more registered cars yeah three times the registrations that we've ever wow. had and it that's was crazy awesome. how many of them came in like the last two weeks too so the car the show just blew up at the end there so that's great uh, great show great time and then uh, we're here in the, uh, the the container park and downtown Las Vegas. Uh, that's where we record the show from the uh, Rami studio that happens to be yeah. located right smack in the middle of Life is Beautiful. Uh, <laughs> so that was also going on at the Life same time. Life was beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> getting in and out of our place, coming into the studio uh, was a hassle. We had to have our badges and stuff like that, the wristbands to get in. Uh, in after, you know, being there all day on Friday to set up the show and then uh, being there at, you know, six in the morning or five thirty in the morning for auto fest and doing the show all day we came home uh you know took a shower and then just came right back <laughs> out and did life is beautiful till you know one in the morning so it's just wow. it's been a long weekend uh but anyways we're back at it we're here to talk about the cars uh what do we do on this channel we talk about uh you know we find the most interesting car of the day from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites we pick the most interesting mm -hmm. one we have a conversation about that car and then we make a prediction as to what we think it'll sell for on its respective auction uh we have that discussion along with you we want your input let us know what you guys think the cool thing about the show is that we make that prediction and then boom we go into the future uh we have our little delorean future machine and uh <laughs> at the end of the show we will tell you exactly what happened with the car in its auction we'll, we'll reconcile whether or not we were right or wrong usually we are wrong because uh, neither one of us know what we're doing do not take our advice we're bad at this uh michael d what is our car today i'm pretty this is this has become a blue chip rig. I, this is definitely the most. In, these are consistently the most interesting thing on. Yeah. Uh, what are we on? Bring a trailer here. Bring a trailer. And John, so here, what we're looking at, what JP and I are talking about, is a 2000 Porsche Cayenne GTS with a speed manual. So, why I felt this car was interesting is simply this I think that this car and its like maximum retail value. Uh, is is going to be for us a reflection of where the market is at. Uh, first, you have to understand that um, E1 Cayennes uh, aren't really worth that much money, but the GTSs are probably, arguably, the funnest to drive. And this car was the only time you could V8 with a manual gearbox in Porsche's SUV. So these cars have really gone up in value over the last couple of years. And in fact, on Bring a Trailer in July of 2021, this car sold previously for $91,000. And uh, I think JP would agree with me. The market was going crazy at that time. Now, here we are late in the summer, and we're starting to see interest rates go up. And we're, we're definitely perceiving, you know, with some parts of the used car market, 
uh, that some of the prices are softening. Now, certainly the best of the best cars are still bringing premium, still bringing really good money. But by and large, we've seen some slowdown in the market. Now, the auctions in Monterey wouldn't tell you that, but but for the rest of us, like lay people, you know, that have to work for our money, uh, car prices have slowed down. This car had an MSRP of $92,000. Last year in the summer, it sold for $91,000. Our car is in spectacular condition, just 31,000 miles, offered out of Smoke Tree, California. This car was loaded to the hilt, including JP. This car has PDCC. Porsche Dynamic Chassis Control. Now, I can explain a little bit what it does, but you've owned any one Cayenne that had it on there, and I've driven with you in that car, and I will say to this day, the fastest I've ever seen you drive on a consistent basis hmm. is in that Cayenne and none of the cool 911s I've ever seen you own. You used to rip in that car. Uh, that chassis control system on this car um, basically fools gravity and mother nature. I mean, it is just unbelievable how well these cars will handle. And this one's got 21 inch wheels. It's got all the bells and whistles. Um, it's a beautiful car. So the reason why I chose it, John, is we can look at the car, we can look at the platform and, and, uh, and then I think the result will tell us if the market is still up or if it's come back down. Again, this is a $92,000 car that sold for $91,000 with 30,000 miles on it last year. Do you think it's going to bring that again after we evaluate the car? I love the car. It's got everything going. All the color and the manual and low most and attractive color. And it's in California. Blah, 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 blah. So, JP, uh, tell us why PCC is cool. Tell us why you love E1s with a manual. And then and you and I will battle back and forth to see if we this car is going to test if the market is up or down. Because I think this will be a good test. Well, yeah, you're absolutely right that this this is about as good as it gets when it comes to a Cayenne. I have owned a turbo Cayenne of the same generation and year with PDCC, and that is the car you were talking about, and you're absolutely right. I don't, I don't know if I could drive any faster than that thing. Uh, it was yeah. unbelievably good, uh, despite its gajillions of pounds. I've owned a Cayenne GTS manual, uh, but mm -hmm. that manual did not have the PDCC. So combining those two things, I've never driven one. I've never driven a Cayenne GTS with the PDCC, and I can only imagine how good that must be. Now, the turbo <laughs> is obviously faster uh, technically, but the the manual version has got to be so Ooh, much yeah. more fun because I don't. There there are few vehicles that are as satisfying to drive as one of these with a stick. It, it really does just blow your mind. Um, about the only negative I can think of on this entire car, I mean, it's got low miles, got all the right options. It's just that sea of beige interior. Uh, I'm not in love with the exterior color, but I don't hate it. Uh, boy, if the interior were black, it would be really cool. Or if at least it were two-tone, like black and beige or something like that, or maybe the hazelnut that some of them have. But this one is just all beige all the time. That's a lot of beige. That's like Tatooine-level beige all over the place. Um, but I think you can live with it given how much fun this thing must be to drive. The big question is, like you said, where are we in the market? Um, at the time that we're recording this, uh, you know, we're about a week after uh, a pretty severe stock market crater. Uh, yes, yeah. we're talking about interest rates going up. There's all kinds of craziness going on in the world. Uh, and every indication says that, uh, that we've got some turbulent times ahead when it comes to the economy. Uh, the severity is up to interpretation. Um, is this the type of uh, car, uh, is this the type of thing that if you look at as an investment, is this, does this thing, is this thing in recession proof? Is this the type of thing that you can put your money in and uh, it just doesn't matter? Um, what do you think? I, I don't, so it's the problem, again, um, I'm we sorry, you, you cut out when you say, when you answered that. Yeah, so I don't think so. And again, what we're talking about is an investment-grade Cayenne. Well, what does that mean? It's like a, an oxymoron, right, JP? Yeah. I mean, if we're talking about a rare or you know excellent condition, low-mileage, air-cooled anything from Porsche, uh, it's investment-grade, and you keep thinking the future is bright for that. But who on earth needs a six-figure E1 Cayenne? Nobody. This is yeah. as excess as possible. So, uh, a lot of times when we see you know changes in the market, the last the last vehicles to rise or the the last things to rise are oftentimes the first things to fall. 
And yeah. that's why I thought this one was so interesting because again, you know, if we're in a, a moment of excess and money is flowing, uh, who wouldn't want to have this if it really didn't cost you much? But with the price of money going up and, and things starting to tighten, you know, gas and, and, and other things, um, I just, I don't feel that this seller is going to get the same money he paid for the car. Uh, and so that's why I thought it'd be interesting for us to just take a look at it. Um, I love the car. Uh, but I'm not giving him $91,000 for it. There's just no way. I don't think it's going to be worth that much next year. Yeah, I think that's a good take. I don't think there's any long term on something like this. You no. buy something like, like this because you want to drive it. Uh, this is a driver's vehicle. Now, if you compare this to anything that Porsche makes right now, uh, let's say you go down to the dealership and you want to order the best Cayenne there is. None <coughs> of them can yeah. compare to this. Right. I don't. Isn't that crazy? There, there's you cannot buy this. This is not something that Porsche will give you. Sorry, you can get something that might be faster technically or newer and all the whiz bang stuff, but they don't. They don't make anything this good. No. Um, they so just true. don't. The new Cayenne Coupe is really a cool car. I own a, a Macan GTS and it's fantastic, but it's yeah. not this car. I would, I would trade my Macan in a heartbeat for one of these. <laughs> Seriously, um, and you know, given that this car has so few miles, this is about as close to going down to the dealership and getting one of these uh, right. brand new. I mean, thirty-one thousand miles. I haven't seen one that few miles in a long time. Now, these in normal miles, call it. 70, 80,000 miles or 100,000 plus, uh, you're looking at in the, you know, between high 30s to low 40s, sometimes really exceptionally nice ones with PDCC uh, might get 50, but 90, that's just not good. I, I, it, that's not going to happen. What's your number? What do you right. think this is going to bring? So here's where it gets real interesting, John, because yeah. so far we're, we're kind of lockstep as far as our take on the car. But it's worth noting that the car closes in a couple of days from when we're recording this part of the show. Uh, it's already up to $65,000 on, uh, let me read it to you. I'm just scrolling here, four bins. So not a lot of action, but that doesn't mean a lot on Bring a Trailer. No, the real act, the real money comes at the close. Uh, so I do think that this car is going to go. I don't think it's going to stall out in the 70. I think it's going to make it up into the $80,000 range. But my belief is that this car will not bring what it once sold for. Now, I could be wrong. And if this car breaks the 92000 or the 91000 that that is that the, the owner has in the car, uh, we can say, well, the market is still going well, even if we're scratching our heads while we say it. But I think this car is going to stall out at $86,000. Um, and I imagine it'll sell for that price. I imagine the owner is just getting off of the car. Um, but... Uh, if it did bring a hundred grand, John, I, I wouldn't be surprised either. Do you know what I mean? I just feel that the market is down a little bit and this car will show us that, but I could be wrong and this car could break a hundred grand and I'd be like, yeah, well, you know, find me another Cayenne GTS manual low miles with all the whiz bang, including PDCC. It's a unicorn. And yeah. so that, so both things could happen and I wouldn't be surprised by either. I'm giving you $86,000, John, over or under. I'm definitely going under. Uh, yeah. But look, I mean, you could, if you watch this show, you could have a drinking game that would work, that would get you pretty blotto if you heard me say uh, inflation, uh, <laughs> you know, and how that affects the the number. Look, if if this thing sold for what was it, ninety one thousand a year ago? Yep. 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 Um, In you know, we've had eight percent plus inflation month over month not per year <laughs> but you know we're talking double digit inflation in that time yeah. uh so call it 10 percent on the conservative side sure uh, I mean, which is absurd it's way more than that uh yeah. but let's say it's 10 percent uh, yeah you know you, at 90 000, 91 000, you got to sell this thing for around 100 to right. get the same money back right. in real terms uh right. at least so even if he sells it for the same amount of money you're definitely you're still losing losing money yeah. uh, and that's what people are not really factoring into their calculations here it just bottles my mind how people still oh prices are up things are still great it's like yeah, hello yeah, prices are up because of inflation, not because of value. The value of this yeah. vehicle has not gone up. Uh, in fact, it's absolutely gone down. So it's just a matter of how much. Um, and like you said, even if it makes the same dollar, uh, if it happens to get in the $100,000 range, okay, then it's flat. Yeah. yeah. 
There's no way this thing's yeah. getting a buck ten or a buck twenty. Get out of here. That's not happening. So what do you guys think at home? <laughs> yeah. uh, are we'll we see. off we'll our rockers? Uh, I mean, how much is a brand new Cayenne? I mean, they're 150 something like that for the nicest yes. one. You know, yeah. I well, mean, G- GTS would be 150. Yeah, Just so a brand new GTS whistles. coupe, uh, Cayenne coupe yeah. is definitely in that buck fifty range or a turbo, maybe even more. Um, I would certainly like, like we said before, this I'd way rather have this than anything, any other SUV on a Porsche showroom anywhere in the world, uh, unless you find this car in a better color uh, combo. That's about it. Give us, give it, give us a number, JP, and then uh, and then we'll oh, see. Oh, I'm what sorry, happens. I thought I gave you a number. Uh, you said eighty six. Uh, I I'm said eighty six. Yeah, I'm just gonna go eighty. I think it'll get to eighty. 80. Yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. Let's so see what happens. Let's see what happens. Uh, we will find out exactly how much this Cayenne GTS manual sells for right after you hit the subscribe, like, and notification button. Hey, guys. I'm super excited to tell you about our sponsor, Guys Customs. That's Guys, G Y X underscore customs that's how you spell it guys customs bracelets these things are amazing check them out they're handmade in america custom bracelets made to match your watch or your car these things are unbelievable i have three or four of them myself my partner michael deeb has a bunch of them uh they're pretty addictive once you get one each one of them are bespoke we're talking uh, we're talking carbon fiber, we're talking titanium, we're talking stainless steel glass. There's none of this cheap Chinese garbage that you see a lot of bracelets being made out there. These ones are super high quality. They're made right here in America. When you go to Guys Customs on Instagram, it's about the only place that you can order one of these. Uh, when you DM the artist, you're actually reaching the real artist when you DM Guys Customs at Instagram. Uh, and she will make you a bracelet made to match that special watch that special car or that special person that has a special watch or a special car and they want something really really cool uh in their life these are the they make the most amazing gifts um i get compliments on mine all the time everywhere i go people are like wow that's really cool you can see in the pictures uh you know these beads the the colored beads are PTS, they're paint to sample. So if you have a specific color code for your car, she'll have beads made that are specifically painted to match your car or your watch. It's unbelievable. You gotta get one of these guys, customs, bracelets. Check them out, they support us, uh, and we really, really, really wanna support them. Guys, customs, bracelets. All right, let's get back to the bids. Let's find out how much that car sold for today. Welcome back, guys. Michael Deeb is typing away. You can hear him tippity-tapping over there. Uh, we have gone into the future. He's making the time machine work, apparently, uh, because you just heard about this pretty amazing, uh, well, I mean, I don't know how amazing it is, but it's certainly the most interesting car of the day, a Cayenne with a manual. Look at that, guys. I know if you're a fan of this show, you have heard of these, but a lot of you probably haven't. If you're new to the show, you're probably going, I didn't know they even made this darn thing. Uh, so what happened with its auction, Michael Deep. John, th- th- this is a real, th- this car for us on the show represent, you know, a, a mirror towards the current financial market of the car. Uh, we noted that this car sold uh, in 21 for $91,000. Its original MSRP was $92,000. I guessed that it make that mark at $80,000 and you took a more conservative number, $80,000. The thing I want to point out before we give you the results is that you have kind of helped educate the audience that even if it brought ninety thousand dollars it lost money because money's more expensive it would really need to hit about 110 grand for this seller to sort of financially break even well our car sold on bring a trailer for just sixty eight thousand dollars and i know my partner's gonna have a headache trying to quantify just how much real money this guy lost because it's probably more than twenty one thousand dollars he probably lost thirty thousand dollars or more on this car um so i think this was a poor sale i i think this guy agreed to too low of a uh reserve and i think he got burned for it i honestly think he would have been better off keeping the car for even if it even if it took a year or two for the market to sort of come back up just to even sniff breaking even it's shocking to me that this guy paid such a premium for this car and then turned around like a year later and sold it for so little heartbreaking 
Um, so, John, as I ask for your take on what happened here, I also wonder, at $68,000, do you think this car is a good value today? In other words, did the buyer do well, in your opinion? Yeah, I don't see the market really returning to the craziness of, call it, less than a year ago, anytime yeah. soon. I mean, uh -huh. we are years away uh, for uh, for anything like that to happen again. I mean, there were so many special circumstances that led to just kind of like this crazy ish storm of stupidity in all kinds of markets whether mm -hmm. it's uh whether it's crypto or you know classic uh, stock market all that stuff everything there was just way too much liquidity in the market the feds went nuts printing money anyone that knows anything about financials know that uh, look everything was just screwed up for the last two years um and that, that's just a special time it's not coming back ever I mean, even if even if the economy returns uh, to, you know, if, if we get a big, uh, you know, if there's some heat in the economy, maybe in a year or two uh, for one reason or another, um, we're still I mean, we've got at least 12 to 24 months uh, realistically. That's if someone decides to do the correct thing to kind of like push out all this inflation. We did lose well over um, a trillion and a half dollars in the stock market uh, just a Jeez. week or two ago. Um, but by all accounts, there was probably three trillion dollars too much money in the system. Uh, so you've got we've got inflation or worse, we've got probably stagflation for a while. Um, <laughs> and I again, uh, I don't care what your politics are. Uh, no one on in any political realm is talking about doing the things necessary to fix any of these problems. Uh, so we're in for a bumpy road. Um, how bumpy? Okay, you know, I, this isn't me saying the, it's the, the end is nigh or anything like that, but I just don't think we're going to see, uh, I don't think we're going to see anything close to a bull market like that in, uh, in classic cars or enthusiast cars for a while. Um, so this particular car, I think sixty-eight thousand um, dollars. That's all the money for one of these. That's uh, sure. you're still looking at a you know twenty-year-old uh, SUV, or maybe not that old, but you know it, this thing. This thing's been around a 15, little while, and like 15, you said before, 15, the break, 15 years, old. years old. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's still cooler than anything else that you can get at the Porsche store uh, with four doors uh, for sure. Um, and do I want one still? Yeah, I, I just think that no one, this car is just not ever really gonna be a collector car unless it had true collector miles. So we're talking like, you know, hundreds or maybe four digit thousand miles, you know, right, you know, right. Two, under 10,000 miles, miles, under yeah. 10,000 miles. Then you've got something that's true collector status. Uh, if it's right. above that, then it's just like, all right, you're looking for the value. Um, I, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think, well, I. To sort of paraphrase what I'm hearing you say is like, sure, this is all the money for this car, but because it's not like a, a, a blue chip collector, yeah. it's still a depreciating asset. And uh, and so you, you might pay a premium for it, but you, you should not expect to get more money for it than you paid for it because it's not really a collector car. Where is if this car had under 10,000 miles and you didn't drive it, then sure, maybe it will appreciate down the road. But this is an S a 15 year old SUV. It's not an air cooled 911 or, or yeah. any other limited production car. There's plenty of these out there. I will just say this. I do think it, I agree with you that to go to the Porsche dealership and buy something in this realm today, you're going to pay twice as much than $68,000 and yeah. it would not be as fun to drive. So if my partner is correct and we're in for a bumpy road, what better bumpy road to take than in a Porsche Cayenne with a manual transmission at PDCC? How's that for a segue? Yeah, and you're saving. I mean, call it this way. Look, you look, you're saving yourself uh, sixty, seventy thousand dollars over Absolutely. a brand new one, uh, and you've got a way cooler car that. You know what? This will probably depreciate a little bit, but at a much slower rate uh, than a brand new one. New one. <laughs> yes. Yeah, um, Bravo! Exactly right. Yeah. So that hockey stick, that up inverted hockey stick, uh, is definitely would you know? I mean, you get a brand new one, they just like drop off a ledge right after you drive it out of it. Now that has not been the case for the last few years because of supply chain issues, uh, but now uh, we're talking. You know, th they've been trying to. You know, there's demand side and there's supply side. So now the, they're trying to affect the demand side uh, by, oh gosh, it, we're getting into a whole other. <laughs> 
a whole other conversation. But yeah, this this car, I agree with you, Michael Deeb. If you're going to be stuck with a vehicle, uh, yeah, this why would not be this? the one. I, I would yeah. drive this car forever. I mean, yeah. if this is the type of vehicle that you could buy now and drive until it's no longer legal to drive ICE cars, which is probably yeah. somewhere between 10 and 15 years. I mean, right. there's not much time left for cars. So yeah. put that in your equation when you're thinking long-term as these uh, for investment. The only ones that are really going to be worth anything long-term are, uh, are true collector mile cars and like racing heritage type cars. Everything else is yeah. eventually going to be worth nothing, zero, because yeah. you won't be able yeah. to drive anywhere. You, you want to see one of these in a museum somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, what do you guys think? Uh, was that a good buy? Uh, did someone, uh, is this a good place to plop your money and kind of wait this thing out? Uh, nice place to hang out? Uh, or is it just like you're going to blow so much money on, on gasp? Uh, dry, trying to drive this thing around that you'll go broke. Kind of depends on, uh, well, a lot of different things. But uh, we'd sure love to hear your comments below. Uh, let us know, did you bid uh, higher, lower, somewhere around us? Uh, we'd like to see what your numbers were. And uh, we'll see if you're better at this than we are. We'll find out uh, in the comments below. And then uh, we'll try it again tomorrow. Thanks no! for watching, guys.